What to do about mass unemployment? This is going to be a massive social challenge. Um, and I think ultimately we will have to have some kind of universal basic income. I don't think we're going to have a choice. Universal basic Un income. Universal basic income. I think it's going to be necessary. So it means that unemployed people will be paid across the globe. Yeah. Because there is no job. Machine, robot is taking over. There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. Okay. Who knows, maybe we'll pay off our $35 trillion, hand him a little crypto check, right? We'll hand him a little Bitcoin and wipe out our $35 trillion. But how do you want We're going to have to move toward, increasingly, the making of uh, purchases that put money directly in the hands of spenders. Because the linkage between having money in the financial assets and having spending is becoming weaker and weaker. Can I Central banks are now going to have to print money and hand it to consumers? In one fashion or in another, um, they're going to have to go more directly to spenders. How, how does that work? Well, it can work in um, either a combination of fiscal and monetary policy. Some, there's a continuum of how it's worked in history. In some cases, you can have the federal government um, run deficits, which the central, the central bank essentially monetizes mm -hmm. by lending them money, and that, that's one path. Some, and then on, there's a continuum, and on that continuum, the far side of that continuum is called helicopter money. Mm -hmm. uh, what helicopter money uh, means um, is the process of essentially pu putting it directly in your hands. The central bank has the capacity, legally, to essentially get money in your hands, there's a legal, in, the laws change from place okay. to place, to put it directly in your hands to have you spend it. In other words, to not bypass, to bypass the financial markets to do that. So it, there's a range of ways that that can be done. History is, is loaded with them. We're just not acquainted with them because they haven't happened in our lifetimes before. I see. In other words, these long-term debt cycles come once a lifetime, and people once are not... Once a century even. Once a century even. So... They're rare, and, and, but, but if you go back over history and you see them, they've happened many times. History has shown that, they, that central banks have bought stocks. Central banks have done anything. They will do practically anything and buy practically anything in order to save the system. So you ask what's sy systemically important, and they'll probably buy it. And therefore, you won't have a regular market. And then you as an investor get to make the choice of what do you own. You have that freedom. So what do you own? What are you going to own? You have that freedom. Some critics say it's wrong for the Fed to be in the market buying corporate bonds, buying investment grade bonds and buying junk bonds, uh, as opposed to what they used to do, which was treasuries and agencies, because it's picking winners and losers in the real economy. Give a type of money that can only be spent for a specific number of reasons. And some worry about that state control or whatever, but like in this particular uh, narrow use case, you want to give uh, checks to individuals to get the economy moving again. Yeah. So if you think of programmable money that expires if you don't spend it. Uber, Bitcoin, self-driving cars. Combine those three together and you have the self-owning taxi. A car that is a corporation that owns itself pays for the car lease, the car insurance, and the gasoline from the revenues it makes, giving passengers a ride, and there's not a single human involved in that matter. It doesn't matter. The Constitution is more important than anything. They wrote it for hard times, and it's been the ambition of every totalitarian system throughout the history of mankind to control every aspect of human behavior. They've never been able to do it because they don't have the technology, but today, that technology now exists. We have facial recognition system that's watching us all the time. We have digital currency that allows the, the government now, and increasingly, to understand every purchase that you make. We have GPS that's following us, and you know, knows where we are all day in our cars, in our watches, in our devices. We have Alexa, and we have, you know, Siri, and are listening to everything you say, every conversation you have, and recording it with the NSA. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, 
we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity. And as an American, you know, uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, oh, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Bassick. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told his members that this has been part of the reason in here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. Teacher, and guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Please inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works, because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that it is all planned out. Now, I want to thank those who purchased the books, Crypto Teacher and the New Road Order book. Remember, the New Road Order book shows you how the world really works, and it is definitely time for you to wake up out of that sleep, especially in the times that we're in right now. And 2024 is going to be one of our most entertaining years. We have the presidential election. 
We have the drums are beating. We have the emerging markets going to be flipping the switch on the fourth industrial revolution. Now, we had the Fed signal rate cuts, but remember, guys, they haven't cut rates yet. So we know the massive magicians are about to set up that distraction. So therefore, they can cut rates while we still have inflation. And in the fourth quarter, once the election is over, we know the movie begins. And also, guys, I want to thank those who purchased the three kids' books. It's time to re-educate. Also, much love to those who donate to the Cash Shop Patreon. Much love. Keep it coming. Guys, if you're not a part of the Patreon, make sure you're donating to the channel through the actual Cash App. But guys, this next Bitcoin and crypto bull run is going to be a utility run. So you want to make sure you have the cryptos that have real utility. And much love to those who are shopping at both stores. Keep it coming. And of course, guys, we get into Bitcoin and cryptos first. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And right now, we have Bitcoin and crypto pulling back. Guys, do not forget CME opens tonight. It's going to move the market. And then, of course, once yields get to moving, the market is going to move again. Remember, this is like clockwork. But this week, guys, we should have a good week. We do this on a monthly basis. The only thing you have to watch out for is these geopolitical events because we hear the drums getting louder. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now, don't forget to pay attention to the actual indicators. We have yield rates, which were down on Friday. They were plummeting. We had the dollar down. And normally, markets will be skyrocketing, but we know Japan has made that move. Japan was holding the globe up with negative interest rates now they're ready to make a move and normalize their economy and remember i brought you the video plenty of times of the japan leaders coming to san francisco planning out the fourth industrial revolution the robots algorithms and drones taking the economy over i let you hear it out the horse's mouth you know the crypto teacher gives you the truth none but the truth yes the truth hurts but it sets you free but we have volume and crypto down. We have Tether and USDC. And then, of course, guys, we have the Fed. Repo at $348 billion on Friday. Make sure you're pulling that on a daily basis. And we have the central banks, of course, moving in lockstep, raising these interest rates, destroying the global economy. Now it's time for them to go to this rate-cutting cycle because we see Japan is going to start raising rates. Guys, this is all about landing us in the fourth industrial revolution. And that's the reason why you're hearing the terminology on the mainstream media. Is it going to be a soft landing or hard landing? They're talking about this new digital economy. And we know with this new digital economy, we're going to have the rise of the machines. So we're going to have plenty of unemployment. So therefore, people are going to be getting free money. And we had Donald Trump talking about sending a little crypto check, a little Bitcoin to wipe out this $35 trillion. And those who build me from the beginning and have the book, you already know the plan. Now you have to put in motion your own plan. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now we had the spot Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs. We had BlackRock, Fidelity, and Grayscale. Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs were down. On Friday, and we have the U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF, the biggest single-day outflows in 90 days. And like I stated, guys, that definitely should change this week because not only do you have the spot, but then now you have the futures that are coming in. And we know on the 5th they need Bitcoin for collateral. I don't see a big pump. And then also, guys, you have to make sure you're paying attention to the geopolitical events, but we're definitely going to be moving up. Now, getting over into a little crypto news, and we have one topic. We have Ray Dalio made this comment way before Andrew Yang and Elon about universal basic income. It's helicopter money that they're going to be passing out to the people. And we know the United States dollar is going to die. We know all fiat dies because you have this money printer. You have the government spending all this money. And we saw the Fed do anything in order to keep this market up. And they keep doing it, putting all these safety blankets like the repo in place. And we see this globally. 
But the fact is, it's all for a plan. The drums are beating. It's all for a plan. And that's the fourth industrial revolution. But remember, the central banks had already ran the simulation on everything that's going to happen in the fourth industrial revolution. But when we look at these digital assets, we saw the central banks move in lockstep with the C word and ran a simulation on how the people would act and saw what they bought with the free time and the free money. Now this time they're going to be handing out the free money and then also have the metaverse so people have somewhere to go on their free time. But this time, guys, we know this money is going to be programmable, telling you what, when, when, and how to buy. And you have three to six months to spend it or poof, is gone. And when it comes to this economy, the machines are going to take it over. You're going to have few humans working inside the real economy. Because remember, crypto means hidden message, hidden meaning. These cryptos are for the machines. And remember, the crypto teacher tells you, because he knows. When it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. But that's all I have for you. Don't forget about the books. Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing. They were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. Most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.